Area 56, I'm Stephanie. I'm so glad to see you here today. What a good month we've had together learning more about how God can give us confidence. After last week, I'm feeling more confident that I am an important part of God's plan. But sometimes even God's plan may seem impossible to us. Let's see what story Julie has to tell us about this. Thank you, Stephanie. Hey everyone, we are gonna head to the Bible today. Let's see if it has something to teach us about having confidence in the face of what seems truly impossible. We are heading to the Old Testament today. During a time when the nation of Israel was ruled by kings. Now, some of these kings were really good kings. Sadly though, many of the kings who ruled Israel were not so good. In fact, they were downright wicked and there may not have been a more wicked king than the one who will show up in our story today. His name was Ahab. One of Ahab's biggest yet most wicked accomplishments was building a temple in Israel. You might be thinking, well, that doesn't sound that bad at all. Weren't temples where people worshiped God back then? And you are right, but here's the problem. The temple he built was not for God the one true God. It was for a false God named Baal, a God that the Canaanites worshiped. Ahab was making it easier for people to worship the wrong God. Now, there was another guy we should mention before we check out the story. His name was Elijah, and Elijah was a prophet of God. Prophets were like messengers, delivering God's word to people who really needed to hear the truth. And can you guess who needed to hear the truth? That's right, Ahab. The Bible in 1 Kings 18, 17 through 18 says, when Ahab saw Elijah, he said to him, is that you? You are always stirring up trouble in Israel. I haven't made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have turned away from the Lord's commands. You have followed gods that are named Baal. Do you hear that? Elijah confronted Ahab and spoke truth to him. Elijah continued to show God's truth by telling Ahab to have all the people of Israel and all the prophets of the false god Baal come to a place called Mount Carmel. So everyone went. Elijah set the challenge before Ahab. They both would take a bull, cut it in pieces, and place it on the altar. Now this may seem strange to us, but this was pretty common in their day. They regularly offered sacrifices like this to God. These were often burnt offerings, meaning there was fire involved. So what would you expect them to do after they placed the bull on the altar? Right, set the altar on fire. But Elijah was proving that God could do the impossible. He told the followers of Baal to pray to their God and ask him to set the altar on fire. So the prophets of Baal started to pray from morning until noon. No fire, no Baal. Then it was Elijah's turn, or should I say God's turn. Elijah stepped up and prepared his altar. He placed a bull on it. But then Elijah did something a little strange. He dug a big ditch around his altar. He then had some people fill four large jars of water. Not only that, Elijah had them pour water on the wood of his altar. He then had them do it two more times. That's right, they poured 12 large jars of water onto the wood to the point that the water filled the ditch around the altar too. Now think about this. Have you ever tried to start a fire with wet wood? It's tough, right? Almost impossible. Then Elijah prayed, Lord, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Today, let everyone know that you are the God in Israel. Let them know I'm your servant. Let them know I've done all these things because you commanded me to. Answer me, Lord, answer me. 
Then these people will know that you are the one and only God. They'll know that you are turning their hearts back to you again. So any guess about what happened? Yeah, God showed up in a big way, big time. Right away, the fire came down and burned the entire altar. The fire even dried up all the water in the ditch. Okay, most of us won't find ourselves on top of a mountain in a showdown with 850 false prophets. And we're probably not asking God to rain down fire from heaven to light a soaking wet altar. But you know, we will face times when we find ourselves in situations that seem pretty impossible. Like the challenge that Elijah set up, but God is always there, even in the impossible. I hope you'll remember that. Let's pray together. God, you are able to do the impossible. Right now, there are many things that may feel impossible to us in our lives. But God, I trust that you are in control. Like Elijah, I want my confidence to come from you. Help me to show confidence and trust you no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks, Julie. That is such an incredible story of the impossible. Since we're finishing out our month of confidence, let's practice what we've learned with some next steps today. The first one is to have a conversation around a family meal or time in the car together. Ask everyone, what is something in your life right now that seems impossible to complete or overcome? Then, as a family, say a prayer to God, asking Him to show up in each of your impossible things. The second next step is to go for a nature walk. Make sure though that you're extra observant. Look at all the things in nature that seem impossible. Dead flowers that are blooming again in the spring, these crazy cicadas living in the ground for 17 years and then coming back. Thank God for all the big and little ways we see the impossible things He does for us. Okay, you all, I know that I really wanna be out in nature. I love summer. So I'm gonna listen for those cicadas this week and talk to God. I hope that you find something that you wanna do too. We're so glad that you're here with us today. If you wanna check out these next steps and other great family things, be sure to check out crosspointweb.org family and subscribe to Crosspoint YouTube channel. We hope to see you all next week. Bye, Area 56.